Why you got them shades on? Shoot. Because I be stay focused on my future, bro. <laughs> stay focused on my future. <laughs> I just wanted to do that. That's the only reason why I sat down with these shades. What's good, everyone? Welcome back to episode number three. 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 Of the Rags to Richness podcast, where we tell stories of creative entrepreneurs around the Atlanta area right now until we can travel further in hopes that it brings a wholeness to you as the viewer. Today, we have my man Brill, the owner of Wonderland, and many other things. My boy, welcome. Uh, Appreciate welcome. you for Appreciate welcoming you. me into Appreciate your space. You. It's always love, it's always love. Go ahead always and love. Yourself, bro. Man, what's up, what's up world? It's Brill, um, you know, it's so crazy. In a couple months, we won't have to introduce anything. You know, the world would know myself and Nehemiah. We won't have to do any more introductions, but right now it's Brill, the creative wonderland. The artist, the you know philosopher, you know the person that's just you know looking to make the world a better place. Yeah, bro. There's so many things I gotta ask you Heard. to that end, but uh, we got connected what two years ago. We were just two, talking off camera two years ago through yeah. our man Spiff, King Spiff. I'm gonna put his Instagram right here. Y'all need to check him out. Go follow him. He did this incredible mural back here. And I knew Spiff before I knew you. Er, yep. And Spiff told me to come through because he wanted me er. to just document the process. Yep. As we were saying off camera too, this whole setup was not here last time. Yeah. As far as like what you put in the space and as far as my gear, like we both grown. Elevated. Then. So it's really cool to see the, the growth since then. But um, you and I met that long ago, but we don't know too much about each other. Right. Not so that. I'm hoping to tell some of your story to the viewers in hopes that they can relate to some of what you're saying, be inspired. Maybe you can impart some wisdom on them. Um, and I just want to get to know you better because I'm trying right. to build with you too. Bro. Ask so, away. Yeah. So, man, let's start on what you do. And I know that's a multifaceted question because you are a multifaceted artist, creative. But what is your 30-second, like, what do you do, bro? Like, what do you say to that question? As of now, I mean, I'm a, I'm a man that wear many hats. But as of now, right now, I'm working on becoming, like, the biggest artist to ever exist. You know, painter. Um, and not even skill set wise, because I don't feel like any genre right now is based off of talent. Obviously, talent plays a major role in it, but it's more so I want to be the biggest branded artist and lucrative artist to ever exist because there's so many artists that are great talent wise, you know what I'm saying? But their paintings are still in the house. Mm. I don't want to be that artist. Mm. Anything I make is like it's gone before I even painted it. Mm. You know what I mean? So you make with the intent to, it's, it's to share. It's, yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Because how I look at my art is more so like, okay, what's the value if I get this to somebody? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, why would I charge you 20000 if you don't see the value in it? But now if, I, if you understand that I'm, I'm about to be the world's biggest artist, now you understand longevity of why you why you're gonna pay twenty thousand for for a painting because now you understand in five years that twenty thousand is a hundred thousand. Mm. So you know, but that comes with marketing and branding. Absolutely. Talk to me more about value. Like, what does that word mean? Because I they hear me throw around that word value all the time. So what is that word? What's the significance of that to you? Value to me is what separates you from the next person who's doing identical to what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like if you look at two cars or let, let's just say Nike, because I, I, I love the aspect of Nike. You know, it's so many shoes that have the same silhouette of Nike. Right. But what is that? The value of that Nike check? You know what I'm saying? Just the, the value of that Nike check has persuaded you that this is a better shoe, even though that, that shoe over there with no check is could be more durable. But who will ever know? <laughs> not me i mean but that's what i'm saying but that's the value that's the brand behind that check right. yeah. something so small you know what i mean right. but it's the same thing with us that logo whatever your logo is whatever my logo is what's the value behind that logo mm. that makes it say i'm going with that mm. so marketing yeah and are you saying that you're focused on your personal branding to raise the value right. of brill right as so a, a brand? of course i mean because me personally you know I'm, I'm this person that's so opposed to jobs, right? Like, mm -hmm. fuck a job, but at the same time, I understand that you gotta start somewhere. You could be working at a job, right? And then hopefully, if you're a creative, you're taking everything, obviously you gotta pay rent, but everything you got on the side, you pushing that into your career, rise into your career. But 
I got so scatterbrained. What'd you just ask? I was asking, like, as far as value, is that, like, are you raising oh, yeah, per the personal value brand. of your Yeah, of course. Brand? Go back to what I was saying. So, me personally, I want to get paid just for being me. Mm. Like, if you look at, like, I'm not really a fan of the Kardashians, but look at the Kardashians. They've shown you that you don't have to be, you don't have to be good at anything. <laughs> Because even to this day, I don't know what I don't know what they're you know, good at. They do. Like, I don't know the title. Like, you, how you just asked me, what do I do? If you ask Kim Kardashian, what does she do? I'm a hell of a person that, that, that's that good at branding. Yeah. So yeah. it's the same thing. So Which when you... There is an art to that. Right. That's what I'm saying. So that right there is a skill set. So mm, once you exactly. can understand you have the power to influence, now you can be paid to do anything you want to do. Whether you want to say, hey... I'm going to uh, sip tea all day. You know how many tea people going to send you packets of tea? <laughs> You're so right, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, right. so it's just that that power of branding is yeah. just like, how far will you go to brand yourself so you can live a life to where you can just be you every single day and get paid for it? Mm. And I know a lot of people talk about money isn't everything, but money is the, the catalyst that allows you to live a, a free life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because that's all it is. It's just buying you time. Yep. That's all it is. I'm listening to you, bro. I told you I was going to be taking notes because I don't want to forget some right, things right. that you say. Right. Um, boom, boom, boom. So what would you say to somebody who's like, I don't want to be in front of a camera. I don't want to have a personal brand. I just want to be to myself and make my own money. Like, is there still power in like building a personal brand in some way? Like, how would you, would you, let me ask two questions. Would you encourage that person to build a personal brand? And if so, how would you encourage them to do that? I would encourage them because, like I said, for right now, I want to be the face of my brand until I no longer have to be the face of my brand. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. Because it's more so long. It's, it's, it's an influence thing with me. You know what I mean? It's based off of long term. I think the once you understand your long term goal, now you understand, OK, do I want to be the face of my brand or whatever? If you if it's not long term as far as in what your personal brand wants to do, then you don't have to be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. But a person like myself, I understand what I'm trying to do 20 years from now and let's make a change. So it's kind of like, how can how can I make a change? Like, obviously, if five people came in here, I can influence them. That's five people. But just imagine if I can influence six billion people. That's all off of me showing my face and people being aware because that's the thing with building the brand. First, people are curious. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? After they're curious, that question mark, now whatever link that follow up after that, they tap on that or whatever. And then they ask more questions. But you first have to get them curious. If they're not curious about what's going on, then you don't have them. But as long as they ask some questions to say, hey, who is Nehemiah? They already asked a question. You already got them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But if, if they're walking past and nobody's asking who you got to do better at Brandon, you know what I'm saying? You just a, you just I hate to say it, but you just a nobody. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know who you are as a person. You right. know your greatness. But to the world, you just a nobody mm -hmm. until you become a somebody. Right. And we all have to go through those eras of proving we, we proving ourselves right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I use this philosophy all the time. It's kind of like when Michael Jordan was in North Carolina. You know what I'm saying? He, I'm pretty sure he understood what he was going to do. Mm -hmm. But he, to then, then he was just a regular person. Right. Regular Joe Schmo, just yep. another person wearing a uniform. Yep. But that goes to show you, as long as you know the vision long term, mm -hmm. the world just got to sit back and watch. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Talk to me more about that vision. Like, is that something you always had? Is that something yeah, that for like, sure. developed over time? Are you always this confident in yourself? Like, talk to me about, mm -hmm. like, that vision, like from being a kid into right. coming into an adult, right. being a father, like how has that changed as you've grown? Man, my, my vision, I, I've always had the same vision since I was a kid. Mm. You what, know? what was that vision? Like in a couple I, I, just, I just knew I wanted to change the world mm. and whatever I did, you know, that's why school was never really my mission. That's why I dropped out when I was in 12th grade. You know what I mean? Like I knew. So when, you didn't even finish high school? No. Nah. I, but I, I knew as a kid that that's not what I wanted to do. Now, I'm not encouraging anybody. Like, obviously, if, you, if you're a doctor or, or somebody that needs that piece of paper, do that. Because we need more thinkers. We need we need more doctors. We need more people who can change the world, not just on an entertainment level. But for me, I always knew that I wanted to use my mind, you know, on a creative standpoint. So I was just like, school doesn't really... I don't really need that. You know what I'm saying? I, I've never really listened to society. Mm -hmm. I've always been that type of person that if you're telling me not to go down this way, I'm going to go down this way <laughs> just to, to see why. See. Why, why did, why did, yeah. if, and especially if you've never been down there. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? I got to be the one that come back to the village and say, hey, I know they said it was some dark shit down there, but listen, this is the way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? While I'm draped in all this gold, it's because I went down this way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? While y'all still doing this poverty shit, come this way. This is the way. But I got to be the one that sacrificed everything just to say, okay, I did that. Because I don't want to live a life of regret. Mm. So as far as the vision, since I was a kid, you know, I come from a, a, a household of like, you know, I, I didn't, I never had parents. You know, my, my mom, she was a hustler. So she spent majority of her life at, at work just hustling. So that just left me and my sister at home to really just raise one another. My sister's just a, a year older from me. So growing up, I really didn't have confidence instilled in me from my parents. So just even looking back, I'd be like, damn, where did where did this come from? That's it's, what I was just about to ask. Like, where did this confidence come from? Who instilled that into you? And I think that's the importance of getting to know self. I spent a lot of my, my childhood in my room talking to myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But little little did I know it, I was really manifesting my life. Mm. Like if you so ain't what did that look like? Like young mm. girl in his room. What were you saying to yourself? Man, I want to be successful. I want to be big. Like, just looking at people on on the TV because those were my heroes at the time. It, Who were some of your heroes back then? Man, back then, my heroes was like, cause it, it it obviously it it changed. But when I was a kid, man, I liked the most mediocre people like mm -hmm. Allen Iverson. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot of musicians. You know, basically because not having a father, you 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 have to turn to something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And to me, what raised me was music. That's how even now, fast forward, I understand the importance of music. I understand that it could be detrimental if it's not taught in a way that you can really digest it. But back then, you know, growing up in the 90s, I was listening to a lot of stuff that had a lot of lessons in it. So it's just like, OK, those mm -hmm. those were my fathers. Those were my uncles. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that vision was always the same. And it's just crazy that to think that. How long does it take to really see a vision come to life? Mm. It's 31 years in the making. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Still making. That's so. Still that's what I'm saying. So that's how. I, that's how I understand that you just gotta. <clears throat> you gotta keep keep, and sometimes it's trial and error. Sometimes that vision is gonna seem like it's left in the dark, but sometimes you gotta walk away, mm. and come back and say, "Okay, ah, I know what I gotta do now." Mm. You know what I'm saying? I wanna. I'm gonna make a, a bookmark right there. Walk away. So. I want to go back to you being in high school. Right. I guess we didn't get there yet in the story, right. but like, I guess we can fast forward there. So when you dropped out of school, right. so you didn't have, you said you didn't have parents around as much. No. So did you feel any opposition as far as like dropping out or did you not really have anyone to say like, oh, that's probably not a good idea. You kind of just went and did what you always felt was best. See, my, my mom was like, my mom always wanted me to get my diploma, but I never really looked at my mom as my hero. So I ain't have a, I, like I wasn't, you know, a lot of people, they be inspired just because they be wanting to make their mom proud or their father proud, whoever's, you know, raising them. But I was, you know, I, I ain't really, like, even though my mom was in my house, I ain't really like know my mom just because like, she was always she was at it. Like, that's one thing that I get from her. But at the same sense, like when I, when I dropped out, Around the time, there was a lot of stuff going on, but that was like the, the icing on the cake, like a situation had happened that really caused me to grow up to where I was just like, man, school ain't even a priority right now. Like I'm in the 12th grade, but like I'm experiencing life like as a even though I'm still a young man, like I experienced like some grown man type shit, life altering shit. So I was like, man, school ain't that's less less little kid shit to me. Like that ain't my priority. Right. Like I gotta yeah. go. I gotta. I gotta make something of my life now because even when you graduate, like it's still that gap. Like you know that that you gotta go to college. That could be four years, eight years, or yeah. whatever. You still got all those years to try to figure out what you want to do. And even still, once you get that paper, it's like, damn, is this gonna work? A lot of people still don't even know. A lot of people I graduated with were like, I still. That's, I'm and sure and I don't I'm... have time for that. Like if if I'm <laughs> yeah. a gamble, yeah. I want to gamble on me. I want to gamble on some stuff. At least, it, even if even if all this shit fail, at least I can say, well, that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, even even if I don't get to that, blah blah blah, I still got to that place because I did something that nobody ever did. I I, I lived a whole, my whole life following my dreams. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? So that was that was success to me at the end. If mm -hmm. if that's if that's how the chapter looked, I'm good with that. You never followed your dreams. You know what I'm saying? You was at a job for the your whole life. Mm -hmm. And you got four or five years of retirement. 
That ain't success to me. Nope. Some people it might be though. Yeah, it's just some people to, it might be, but yeah. I feel like for a lot of people it's not. Yeah, you gotta. It can't be the majority. You gotta gamble. You gotta roll them dice. It, that's if you want something bigger. You know what I'm saying? Like if you if you want this content life of where you just struggling to just pay bills, then cool. Get a nine to five and work it out. Mm. But I want I want I want to change this shit, and that comes with money. Right. Anything that we trying to do on a big scale, either we gonna have to use somebody else's money or we gonna have to use our money. So that's what I'm saying. So we gonna have to figure out how to get this money, and that's not gonna come from these little small nine to five jobs. It's not. That's only designed to keep us here. I right. wanna I wanna go right. here. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So with that, that's why at a young age I was like, I know I gotta do something to where I'm the CEO of my company, mm. so I don't have a cap over how much money I can make. As these regular jobs, you already know your cap. You already know your. You already know what you're gonna make next week. You gonna know what you're gonna make too. You already got your whole month planned out. So now you gotta start figuring out. Okay, what I'm gonna do with this check? What I'm gonna do with this check? I don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Whatever we decide to do as entrepreneurs, hey, either we can make four or five dollars a month, or we can make five thousand dollars in an hour. (laughs) Exactly. It's limitless. So what you wanna do? It's limitless. That's the thing that bothered me about. Being in a nine to five was yeah. like not having that, not even guarantee, but not having that possibility of going past this glass ceiling, right? right? right, right. They call them the golden handcuffs, right. right? At Google, where they give you all these benefits right. and not just at Google, but any big tech company or really any company that gives you like benefits and stuff like that. But they give you good benefits, not good, incredible benefits, um, great pay over six figures. You have the office has kitchens, chefs there at all times. You can eat whenever you want, breakfast and lunch, um, and all these different things to keep you there from leaving. Even so it's hard to see past all of the golden handcuffs. So, but that's what they call them? Mm-hmm. I mean, but that's, that's, a, that's a slap in the face. Mm-hmm. Golden handcuffs? So, no, Google doesn't call them that. Oh, oh. No, that, oh. no but that's what, like, that's the term that, yeah. like, people use to describe those things. Yeah, yeah. No, that would be a slap in the face. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, who? <laughs> no, nah, but, that, so, I want to ask you, I know you've been asking me questions. How, how did you feel, like, mentally? You know, I know you transitioned, but how, what was that like for you? Like what? And what was the? I guess the climax. Mm-hmm. Like, did you did you plan it out, or was it just like, okay, I got so much confidence in my brand or whatever, and I made this amount of money, or was it like, okay, I'm just gonna stop and I'm just gonna do my own thing? Yeah, man, I've always had the vision to leave yeah. since I saw something yeah. greater. Okay. Okay, like, but talk about that. When when did you see something greater? In college. Right. So I talked about this in the uh, the leaving Google video. Right. Um, but I'll just give like a quick summary because I feel like every podcast, I'm going to speak about it until like I moved to something different. But um, in college, early college, that's when I picked up a camera for the first time. I got my internship at Google, had enough money, bought a camera for the first time after one and one for so long. Ran around New York City shooting, you know, models, that type of thing, random skyscrapers and stuff, going to meetups and meeting people. A lot of fun. Right. And I saw something, a different route that I hadn't seen before. And I had always seen, you know, these YouTubers on, you know, YouTube. Back when I was 11, 12 years old, playing Minecraft and Roblox and seeing these YouTubers make videos. I was like, these people get paid to play video games? That's fire. I started a YouTube channel as a kid. Fast forward. So, I mean, there were seeds planted as a kid where I saw that there was something different than the school path that I was on. But I had two-parent household. They're still together. I love my parents so much. They're still one of my best mentors. I still talk to them about a lot of stuff. Um, and just like to hear their advice on things. So they were the main people kind of guiding my life. So it's kind of opposite to you. Like you always were your own voice. I never had my own voice for real, for real. It was just like, I'm listening to my parents and doing what they think is best because they love me. So of course I'm gonna do that, right? And they led me all the way to college, Georgia Tech. I don't regret any of that at all. But it wasn't until college when I started to find my voice a little bit and not even find it. I always did have a voice, but I was suppressing it because I thought what my parents knew was better than my voice, you know? So it wasn't until college when I started really taking it seriously. You could ask my parents, ask my girl. I was trying to drop out of school. I was like, bump this school stuff. I'm gonna be a photographer, it's going well. But it wasn't well enough at the time until I got my job at Google. The video with Foggy Raw blew up and then it made sense to leave. So, um, but in that process, I was asking you about like your self-confidence and stuff and believing in yourself because 
I didn't have that until just like a month ago, bro. Right. I've always been self-confident. But I see, always knew I was going to be what I wanted to be, yeah. but it, I always knew I was going to be what I thought I wanted to be, which is what my parents wanted me to be, right. until I figured out what I really wanted to be. Right. That took a while for me to build that confidence. But, you know, sometimes it takes reassurance. Like, sometimes it takes for you to actually get a couple of deeds to say, okay, Definitely. I got it. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't gonna lie, like, just to piggyback, like, the dynamics of, you know, having parents and not having parents. Because, like, at one point in time, my confidence was zero. You know what I'm saying? I remember, like, uh, I had to be, like, in, I want to say, like, fifth grade. And at the time, I was drawing a lot. Like, I was going crazy with the drawings. And I remember I had won, my, like, my first award in school. Like, it was, like, best artist of the whatever it was. It was, like, in that whole county. Wow. And I just remember, like, everybody in the, because it was in the auditorium, everybody was like this. Mm. I looked around, I didn't see my parents. Mm. At that point, like, I felt like I can't be the best artist because mm. my, my parents ain't even here. Mm. Me as a kid. So How I went, old were you then? Fifth grade, that's like, I don't know, probably 12 or yeah. um, somewhere around there. But I ain't going to lie, my confidence was, it was gone. It was destroyed. Mm. It was diminished. In that moment. Mm -hmm. Did you feel it for a second of like, wow, look at all these people? And yeah. then when you didn't see your parents, you were like... Because like, I already knew I wasn't going to see my father. Mm -hmm. Just because my father, like, prison, in and out. But I expected my... I, in my the kid, me, I expected my mom to call out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I expected her to be like, okay, my son, he got, he got something coming up. I believe in my son. So I was like, I was looking... Even though I wasn't really rocking with my mom, I was expecting my mom to be there. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, like, psh, I think I threw the trophy away, to be honest wow. with you, after that night. Because I was like, this, sh this shit don't mean nothing to me. Right. At that point, that's when I kind of, like, built up this this image of, like, accolades of that I didn't really care about accolades. Mm. Like, even if wow. you give me an accolade right now, like, it's just, that's just a possession. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, like, if I, I always told myself, if I ever get an accolade and it means something to somebody more around me, I'm going to give it to them. Like if you if I get a Grammy and wow. you and you really cherish this Grammy, you can have that Grammy, cause you'll probably never get a Grammy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about the yeah. Grammy. You know what I'm saying? If 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 I, if I make your day with giving you this Grammy, go put this in your house, cause me I'm gonna go put it somewhere that you ain't gonna never see it, just because of that moment. You know what I'm saying? So, but so that diminished my um my confidence. So for a while, like probably until I was in like. I want to say like high school, I was like the the quiet kid in class. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But after that moment, mm -hmm. what did you like next day? Like you wasn't talking just, to nobody, or was just it? It's just it's just like it's just like a mother, mm. like snatched something out of my soul. You know what I'm saying? And it took me years and years to find that. And obviously, as a kid, you don't you don't know because something like we don't be under we don't be in tune with our feelings to understand. Okay, this is. This is why I feel like this. Or what's the trauma? That's trauma. But Especially as a kid, in the black community, bro, right. like it's all fix your face. Right. You know what I'm like, saying? Be be tough. Stop crying. Right. All right. That. Right. Because I mean, that's how our parents had to be. Right. That's how our grandparents, great grandparents right. had to be. Right. And it's beautiful, I think, to see how your generation, my generation. I'm 22. Right. So you're a millennial. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. I think I'm Gen Z. Like right on that. Like because. Right. But it's beautiful to see like y'all start that, and then us come into that more and be more in tune with the wholeness of being human. Right. And that's kind of the point of this this podcast is to right. tap more into that. Um, talk about like like your journey into coming into more of those emotions and being more in tune and introspective with yourself and how that's affected your life in general and your creativity. Man, I would say my, my emotions really stem from like life. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people say they've been through some stuff, but I don't. I done been through some stuff to where if you and I wanted to get that get 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 like uh, get together and go over a script, that's a that's the movie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But every time, you know, I fail, cause I don't to me, my biggest teacher has been failure. Mm. This whole journey. Success ain't really taught me nothing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Cause Explain that a little Cause more. success is a moment. Success is a like, you know what I'm saying? Like if we have a successful night, that's just a moment. Mm -hmm. But failure is months, it's years. You know what I'm saying? Success is literally just this, and that's it. 
And, and you, failure isn't a moment either? No. Failure is something that you got to feel. Like, it's something mm. that shapes you. Like, it's something gotcha. that says, okay, I need to do something different. Gotcha. I got to... Success is like, it's so content that you don't have to pivot. It's like, gotcha. I'm good. I'm good. I'm mm. good. I'm great. I'm great. 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 <laughs> and then you get a knock at your door and you got eviction. Mm. I got yeah, to figure something out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But in that moment of you figuring something out, you figured something pivotal out. Like, hey, I'm going over here, but that's failure. That's what failure yeah, do. Yeah, bro. How, there's so many people I talk to that see failure as a negative. And it seems like over the years you've seen, like you can look back and say, oh, this happened for this reason, right. and this happened for this reason. Right. Were you always the type of person to like hit failure and be like, let me figure it out? Or did it take some time to build that muscle up? I, I think so, because like I said, just my mom is a single parent mother, so I've always seen failure mixed with the balance of success. I've always like it's like failure to me. I've, I've always seen failure in, in a sense of like me coming out the wound and not having a father figure. Mm. I've already seen failure. I'm, ar I'm already doomed for failure mm. Wow. because I already understand that my life is not being it's not going to be shaped in a positive way i gotta now i gotta teach myself how to think like a man even even now i'm 31 and i'm still teaching myself you know how to be a man you know even though i am a man but i'm still that's what would life be like if i had a father figure you know what i'm saying right, someone with your drive vision all of that man you know my even though my confidence is high right now yo if i had a father figure i'll be jumping on this couch right now i already know telling you that I hey would. i'm the greatest alive <laughs> because that's that's been instilled and in my yeah. father taught me that yeah so obviously being in a single parent household my mom was the only breadwinner so now i'm a failure again because now my mom not even there mm. so she not even teaching the 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 feminine side of the balance of man and female now so now who is there to teach this kid about life nobody mm. it's a blank canvas so as far as the failure stuff i just adapted to it but i learned how to make it work you know so what I'm saying? it's like that's just pretty much what your whole life has been surrounded. Yeah, in. so that's it's what like I'm saying. You, you failure, failure, failure. That's failure, what I failure. man. You when when navigate. yeah, at now when when I see failure, like even now, like okay, it's like waves. Mm. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I understand. Like yeah, we success, but I don't get comfortable. Like I, I promise, on I don't never get comfortable. It's like it's like you know being in the league or whatever, and y'all done had a great run, but little do you know. It's it's a coach over there, over yonder, putting together a super team. Mm -hmm. Next year, y'all going to lose. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's a wave. But it took for y'all to get beat to understand that strategy. To understand, okay, this is how they play. They they like to shoot with Steph. They like to shoot. Okay, we're going to have to box him out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you got to lose. You know what I'm saying? You just, life, you got, you. It's, it's designed. It's not, I mean, just what would life be if it was just all success? You know how much, you know how boring that would be? Facts. Like just, I, it's, I it's just like, lot. just think about when you played on the game and you mm -hmm. put all the stats to a hundred. Right, bro. I hated that as a kid. Like, you I, remember I, them like Nintendo DS cheats or whatever. Right, right. I, I never used them because there was no satisfaction. It's none. Just, but at first, you don't, you don't lost so much. It's like, yo, I want to win. I have to win. Right, right. There's but no then it's option. just like, yo, you press simulate and you don't want every game in right. this tournament. Exactly. I'm talking about you. You went 30 seasons of just winning everything. This is like I don't even want to play this no more. Is that? It's boring. Right. 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 It's so, so it's the same thing with life. It's just we haven't been. It's just we've been conditioned to feel like everything is gonna be all right. You know, everything is success, but it ain't. Yo, this life shit is well, that's hard. That's like what we should strive and attain. Like, right. You're not successful. Right. But that's the reason why people aren't successful because it's like once they hit that, that yeah, once they hit that first bump, yes, they like, bro. okay, this hurt and yes. this ain't what this ain't what they talked about. No. That was me. Right. You know me. Until so. I started to really think about it and I've hit enough walls where like, I care about my stuff enough where I push past the walls, right. but when I hit certain walls, I would stop. Right. For example, I don't know if I told this on the podcast. My girl when I was first starting with videography, going from photography to videography. I had like so many bad videos, bro. Like I could think of like three off the top of my head that I thought were incredible at the time. Right. Give them to the client and they're like, this ain't it. Now this let me ask it. you a question. Were you creative directing those videos? Sort of, kind of. Right. Yeah, sort of, kind of. For one of the ones that I'm, what I'm thinking about now, sort of, kind of. Right. That was more last minute right. and that was a good learning experience. But man, I had no idea what I was doing. I had my camera, 
my DSLR. It wasn't even this one. It wasn't even the vlog camera. It was the one I had before that camera. So the very first camera, I had this stabilizer. You know the weighted stabilizers? Not the Ronin like electronic one, but the one that used the weights on the bottom. I had one of those. I just bought it. Didn't know how to use it. So the video was all shaky. It was overexposed. And then the edit I did, I put like one of them TVs like right there, yeah, yeah, like yeah. as the overlay. And I thought that was the hardest thing ever, bro. I was so confident and I sent it to them and they were like, yeah, we don't want to pay you the rest of the money. Ooh. And that like, that crushed me, bro. Right. And I felt some type of way. I was entitled. Right. I was like, I did the work. I need the money. Right. But looking back on it, nah, I shouldn't have gotten paid because I didn't do it the way that they needed to. So at that point, and that was like after a couple other things that had failed, like I wanted to quit video, which is sounds stupid, but like I was I was really good at photos. I had a lot of like people, you know, in my DMs like, bro, you hard with the photos. So my expectation was just to be good at video, which is a stupid expectation for having never done video. It's way different, right? So that was a dumb expectation on my part. So I wanted to quit. My girl was like, that's part of it. And you need to keep going. If you like it, you need to keep going. Let me ask you something. What would life be right now if you didn't have your girl to say, keep going? <laughs> well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. That's a good question. I'm but you see, that's, that's, how I would not be. That's, that's how important it is to have people around you that say, hey, you're going to be all right. Because sometimes you got to understand, it's a lot of people in life who don't have those people mm. that saying, hey, I know you just got your ass kicked in that boxing ring. But get up, you're gonna be all right. I got a homeboy right now who had a flawless record in high school, knocking shit out. He got knocked down one time. He ain't, ain't boxed since. Wow. But imagine if he had somebody to say, "Hey, this what come with it." Because you know you win so much, mm -hmm. you don't understand how to take that one loss. Right. To to you, you like, damn. That's it. Because now all you think about is getting knocked out. That's your that's your vision now. Mm -hmm. I can't be the best now. I got knocked out. You know what I'm saying? So I just I applaud. I don't I don't know your your girlfriend name or your ex. I don't know if y'all still together. No, we still together. Yeah, Amaya. I'll, I'll say your name. Amaya, that's my girl. Amaya. You, Amaya. You better. I heard her. I applaud you for you know being that cheerleader at the time because what you don't know you you played a pivotal role. Things could have went left or right. You know what I'm saying? Could have had two different, but. That shit's so important, man. That's I'm why you got her too. Yeah, I say that sure. all the time, bro. But I would not. I wouldn't be here without her. But that, but even like, let's piggyback. Like, even as a creative, right? How important it is to have somebody in your corner that's familiar with the work that you do, and obviously congratulates you on that journey. How pivotal is that as a creative? I think that's incredibly important, bro. And not everyone has it, but I think. Just to have someone that you know is there, regardless of what's going to happen. She was there before I started, before I picked up a camera. We met in freshman year of college, before I had even bought a camera, all that. How, so, did, how did she believe in you? What was that interest like? Man, I, uh, I rizzed her up, bro. Right. Um, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just, I'm stop. Bro, I was not this yep. four years ago. I might put a picture on the screen of what I was looking at four years ago if, I'm, if I want to make y'all laugh for real. But I was not this. I was always confident, always sure of myself. Back then, I was too confident. I was a little cocky. I hadn't really done anything in life. I'm probably going to look back 10 years and say the same thing about me now. But, you know, that's what got me here. I had Nobody could tell me I wasn't fine. I think that's why I'm here. But we met 17 years old, and we just had a lot in common. Raised similarly, two-parent household. Um, both Christian. Um, that's really where we connected right away. Um, and then similar interests, like just music and all that type of stuff. Just started talking. After two weeks, we made it exclusive and been exclusive for over four years. That's beautiful. So, But there's a lot of points through that journey where she's helped at pivotal moments where I could have messed up really bad. And I have messed up pretty bad in a few instances, but she's definitely minimized those things. And having someone that I could just be a sounding board. She's like basically my business partner, like unofficially, officially the business partner, where she'll like check me on things, be like, hey, you need to do this. You said you was going to do this. You need right. to do it. Or don't let them people, you know, say they try to do that. You need to tell them this. Right. And over time, it's built my confidence because I don't know why I was timid when it came to business interactions and like not wanting to step on any toes because I just want 
I think it was me trying to be perfect. Because I have been perfect in my brain, you know? Straight A's in high school, I think I got one B, got to Georgia Tech, doing really well at Georgia Tech, got an internship at Google. So my norm was winning. Right. My norm was, you know, doing well. Um, so I tried to avoid failure at all costs, right? But when I would hit those walls and I would fail, she would be the one to be there and be like, keep going. Keep going, you know? Um, and over time I learned to to not give up. Right. And I mean, that's something that my parents instilled in me, but it's not, it don't really stick until you actually live through life. You yeah, know? you gotta and, experience and it. Have to, yeah, experience it, exactly. So something I wanted to ask you about is you being a father and how like the way that you grew up, there's a lot of people who will resent their parents for a lot of good reasons. And then that'll bleed over into them having kids and they'll kind of fall into the same cycles. Yeah. You obviously are not doing that. So like, what was that always something you knew? You were like, I'm not going to be like my dad. No, I'm for sure. My mom in these certain areas. Cause, cause even when I was a kid, like I understood that this ain't, that's not the type of love that it's like, you know, like when you get a pit bull, right? A pit bull is just a regular dog. You can have a pit bull. I can have a pit bull, both same dogs. How I treat my dog is basically what's going to make my pit bull more aggressive than yours. If you go in the house and you rub that pit bull every day, I love you. I love you, Spike. That pit bull finna be so nice to the world. Mm -hmm. That stigma of pit bulls ain't even going to be a thing. Right. But if I'm going in that house, hey, sit your ass down, blah, blah, blah. Right. That pit bull finna be angry. Exactly. That pit bull finna bite everything that he see walking. So when I was little, man, I just understood like, damn, man. This aggressive way of love, that ain't how I'm designed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even when I was a kid, I knew what compassion was. I knew what empathy was. I knew what forgiveness was. I knew what all of these things were. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, I always said, man, if I want to have a kid, like, what would I do different? Mm. Like, I got to be the parent that I wanted somebody to be for me, to my kid. You know what I'm saying? Like. How do you how do you discipline them? You know what I'm saying? Younger me, well, how would I want my parents to discipline me? Would I want them to say, hey, I'm finna fuck you up? Or would I want them to say, let's talk about it? Mm. Oh, you don't have to lie about that. But mean it though. Not because you know right. sometimes you could be like, yeah. you sometimes you could be like, you don't have to lie. And then you tell the truth and it's go get me the belt. Exactly. No, oh, you know and what I'm saying? And then that makes you curl up and Exactly. So all this teaching the kids is how to be better criminals. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm now I got at first I was lying with no intent, mm -hmm. but now I'm lying with the intent to get away. You know what I'm saying? Out of fear. Exactly. And you know, when you when you're raising a kid, like that's supposed to be your you know, that's your replica. That's mm -hmm. your DNA. All that is is a, a a copy of you mixed with somebody else and it's just you seeing yourself grow up again. Mm -hmm. So why would I why would I be why would I be mean to this person? To mean to your younger self. I, if I if I really mm -hmm. expect this person to be way better than me. I gotta, it's like, it's like a flower. I gotta get the best water. I gotta get the best nutrients. I gotta talk to this flower a little different if I want this flower to really be the flower. So that's you know, when I look at my kids, like even though I feel like I'm doing an impeccable job as a person, I want my kids to surpass me. I want, I want them to surpass me so much that it made, it made my life look little based on what they did. You know what I'm saying? And even when they have kids, it's, I hope it's a domino effect. You know what I'm saying? Because these these people who have generational wealth, that's what they doing. Facts. The white people. That's that's what they That's exactly what they, they do. They 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 are water. Oh, you need seeds. a you need a job, Jimmy? Right. Come on over, be CEO. Right. Like, but, but that's, that's out of college. That's fuck college. That's high school. True. When in high school they True. already they already know. Hey, Not listen. Position ready for them. That's they already know. Look how they walk. Look how they talk. You know what I'm saying? Us as black people, we already in defense. Right. We're we just trying to keep the little that we got. You know what I'm saying? That's why you see a lot of athletes. Because it's like, you already know, okay, I don't know what I want to do, but let me figure out. At least, I, at least I know how to play basketball. At least I know how to play sports. At least it's going to get my mom or dad out the hood. White people, they not thinking like that. Get What you mean, get people out the hood? We good. I, I, I can just be comfortable. Yep. But us, man, I ain't, never, I ain't never had that chill mode. Since, since I was a kid, I always said, I got to figure this shit out. That's a that's a that's a burden, you know what I'm saying. That's why really, what we doing because and I'm saying we because I feel like 
we share obviously we don't we're not in the same career but we share in the same intent of what we want to do obviously i feel like you want to impact and, and make life easier for not just the next generation to come but for the world like if it's up to me i want to make so much money here on this earth that i can literally change the life experience for somebody like you know what i'm saying like this is how we did it ain't got to be like this it ain't got to be hard like, you know what I'm saying? We've made so much money in the economy that we control the economy. Mm -hmm. We got enough jobs for everybody. We did enough trial and error for people to say, okay, do it this way. Do it this way. You know what I'm saying? And even if you fall, enough trial and error to say, okay, this is how you get back up. You know what I'm saying? So, again, that's why I be talking about why I need to do the things that I want to do because it's bigger than me. It was never about me. If it was about me, I would have stopped a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But I understand that what I'm what I'm here to do Sometimes I don't even be operating. It really be a, a spirit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like that be a spirit that's saying, "Hey, trust me, I got you." Cuz sometimes we can't operate off of just flesh. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's it's if you believe in God or if you believe in a higher power, if you if your belief is that strong, sometimes that other entity take the will. Mm -hmm. And when things a lot of times. and when that thing happen, a month from now you be like, "I don't know how I got through that." I promise I don't, I don't know. Really? I was just going or through it. you don't it. see until you look back and really? see how certain things interweave and interconnect. Right. I told my friend earlier that I don't believe in coincidences anymore. No, nah, no. Nah. It only took 22 years for me. Right. But like just looking back on my life, too many things have coincidentally gone right. Right, right. Yeah, no, nah, that's that's that faith. That's that higher power. Whatever you choose to believe in, if you, if you got faith, they going to set it up. All you got to do is be a character. All you got to do is show up with that uniform on and be ready to play the game. Talk about that a little more because we were talking about that on the way in, but just about the power of self-belief, faith in the higher power, faith in yourself and how that like, influences how you act and how that is important for achieving your vision and your dream. Man, a lot of people don't really, it's like, that's what I'm saying. If I was a school teacher or a principal, that would be my curriculum. Mm. That wow, would be, really? yeah, ma manifestation, the power of believing in self. Every day I make the kids come like from, from day one to when they graduated. I would say, what you believe in, what you, what you want to accomplish at the end of this semester. I'm talking about, I'm, I'm going to have every student come up there one by one every day mm -hmm. and say, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. Probably set, week number two. Okay. This is, this is my strategy of how I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. By the end of the semester, I, I guarantee you, everybody going to be a success at what they want to do because I, 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 you manifested something, but now it's like, once you manifest something, the world is not an ear. To say, okay, they said they was gonna do something. And me, I'm the type of person, if I tell you I'm gonna do something, do I cause I gotta I gotta show you that I'm a I'm a man of my word. Mm -hmm. But if I don't say anything, I don't have nobody to prove anything to. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know and saying? a lot of people be afraid to say it because they know if they say it, that means they gotta do it. Right. But that's me, like, yo, the moment I speak something, I already know it already happened. Mm -hmm. The moment I if I say I'm gonna be the greatest painter. I'm already great. I'm already the greatest painter. All I got to do is show up and do this for 10 years or and five do you, years. Do you think that's like some sort of uh, metaphysical thing where if you say it, it will happen and the things in the world will like right. come together to do it? Or do you think that is when you say it, your brain is like, all right, let's get to work? Or do you think it's both? I, I, think, it's, your, I, think, it's a, I think it's a combination of both. It's kind of like what's prayer without doing the work? Mm. Like, I can sit here and be like, hey, I want to be successful. But if I sit on this couch every day, <laughs> I'm just being successful at doing nothing. Right. <laughs> That's a great way to say that. But if I say, hey, I want to be successful, and then tomorrow I'm making calls, I'm, I'm in motion, I'm, I'm here, here, consistently, prayer first, I mean, prayer with preparation and all that type of stuff, you're successful. Yeah, you done. Uh, I don't forget what what Bible verse this is in James, but it says, "Faith without works is dead." Right. That's basically what you're talking about. Right. So it's just like when you believe in yourself. Like I, I'm a firm believer that if you believe in yourself, I don't believe no goal is 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 not achievable. Mm -hmm. It's what you're willing to believe in. You know, somebody was crazy enough to say, "Hey, we can walk on the moon." <laughs> right. Some, but that's still a crazy thing to this day. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's still a thought. You know, versus the person that said, I mean, because I don't believe that we ever walked on the moon. That That's just me, though. Wait, pause. Talk about that a little more. What's your conspiracy? My conspiracy is that 
and I could be wrong, all right? But my conspiracy is that basically when Apple was coming up, they had all this money and, you know, they, they was into technology and stuff okay. that they made it look like we landed on the moon because it looks like a production. So, because so Apple, this yeah, Apple. For sure. Apple so, conspired yeah. with the U.S. government or Russia or whatever in order to make it look like. Yeah, I feel like at the time they were the only people technology wise that can make something look legit. Because everything yeah. is perception is perception. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right now, if 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 people are watching my fan base and I say, hey, I'm about to do a million dollar uh, podcast. If it looks like a million dollars in here, production, lights everywhere, somebody going to be like, damn, I always believed in you. That's true. That's you know true. what I'm saying? So, obviously. So, you, what about NASA? I mean. And all them. But, I mean, aerospace companies I don't, and stuff. I don't, I don't, are they working for I, nothing? No, no, no. I believe that they're, they are. I, I believe it's possible, right? Okay. I do believe it's possible, but I just feel like that moon landing, I don't think that that like happened. Like from back then? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I just don't think it happened. Like, even if you was to go on Google and you type in pictures of Earth, it's just all 3D. You think somebody just made it up? Yeah, but, but, you know, at the time, uh, it, it's either Japan or, or China was trying to be the first people to get to the moon as well. So I think everybody was racing, right? So, right? The whole just, world. Just, so just, just imagine you in a race and... All that matters is first place. That's all that matters. Not necessarily how you got there, if you got yeah, there. Yeah, it, it don't... It, so, but just imagine you come back with the medal. First place. The race is done. Mm -hmm. Some people, like, that's that's all we needed. <laughs> we just wanted to have that title. Oh, that'd be the craziest, like, marketing scheme yeah. ever, if I mean, that's true. Yeah, that, but that's what I'm saying. But it's... But look, look at what came after that. Look how many people they inspired. Sometimes that's what it be about. Some people can fake it, but during that that faking period, how many people did you inspire to be the real thing? Mm. You know what I'm saying? How many people did you inspire to say, I'm gonna get to the moon again? Mm -hmm. With with you faking it. So that's why I don't I don't say it's it's bullshit. Cause I do like I like the inspiration behind it. I yeah. do. Man making it to the moon, damn, the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I like that. You know what I'm saying? But I don't believe a lot of stuff. I'm gonna be honest with you. What else you don't believe? That people like most people are like, yeah, that's true. And you're like, mm, Man, I don't know about that. I don't even. Be sometimes I be sitting in here. I don't even. Be I don't even be believing that a lot of this shit is real. I, f I feel like this is a big ass game. Like a simulation. Sometimes I be thinking that sometimes too, but I don't let. I don't dwell on the thought for too long. Sometimes I be thinking about some, and it appear. Like what? Because that's happened before. I done too. seen some shit. Like what? I done, I done seen three aliens. You were lying. I swear to God. I put this on my my son in my son in my room right now. I put this on my son. I done seen so much shit in this life. Aliens. Three yeah. of them though. Not even just one. Been I done three. seen three aliens Where? in this lifetime. Alright, so look. <laughs> Alright, so look. The the first time, right? Okay, look. Look. I've always been creative and I've always been this type of person, but when I did LSD for the first time, that yeah. changed my life. My my life it People keep saying that. So hold on, wait. Let's let's pause the alien thing. Talk about the LSD thing. Yeah. So people tell me that doing mushrooms and all that stuff will change your life, and you just have to do it once. Mm -hmm. Why do people say that? And I know they tell me because I have to just do it. I don't want to do it. So I'm curious, like what? Okay. Like so why do you say that? It's like this. Imagine your whole life, right? You are you looking at the perspective of what you see, right? Imagine doing something one time to where the perspective is turned around. And now you're looking at yourself. You're looking at yourself so much that now you got to be accountable of everything that you ever did in life. Because mm. sometimes you, we sometimes we don't have to be accountable. Mm -hmm. It's only a, only a few amount of people in life mm -hmm. will be That's accountable it. to say, okay, it's me. Because a lot of us, we do like this. Yes. The whole thing of life. It's right. the whole life. And sometimes a few of us say, it's me. And mean that. Mm. So it's humbling. Like it helps you. It, it's, it's humbling. It helps you understand that, okay, the strategy. And, and to me, like when I did LSD, because like right now, I can gravitate towards a whole bunch of people like myself, like the real side of me. Like, because mm. there's two sides of me. You got survival self and you got what you're born to do. Survival self is basically what attracts, you know, for you to be in any type of atmosphere. Like right now, I can go in any type of 
ghetto environment, any poverty environment, because I've experienced poverty. So I understand, okay, this is this is struggle. This is that. I don't feel no type of way about that. But the real me, I'm a brainiac. I'm a nerd. You know what I'm saying? That that's what allows me to be with these white people over here or to be with these people who don't even know that listen to rap. That's what allows me to go back and forth because I've experienced both worlds. Right. But when before I did LSD, I was just around a lot of like people based off of survival mode. You know what I'm saying? A lot of scammers, a lot of <laughs> forex news. Just just like but they was, you know, a lot of those people are good people, you feel exactly. me? Exactly. A lot of those people do. but again, they just surviving. Right. But if they get an opportunity, they mm -hmm. going to make something mm -hmm. out of it. But right. again, this is survival mode. So, survival mode is basically you do whatever you got to do to stay above water. Whatever that is, whether it's robbing people, whether it's scamming, but again, you put them in a different environment, exactly. you wouldn't even believe that they did none of that stuff. Yeah. So at that time, I was like the, the unicorn because like I always knew wrong from right. So even though I did some fucked up stuff growing up, I always knew that, hey, that, that's not me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I knew I never wanted that's so important. I never knew I never I never wanted to be a gangster. Right. You know what I'm saying? I hung out with gangsters, but, but that always that, that ain't that ain't what I want to do. That's so important. I want to make a, a point right there because. It, I'm reading Atomic Habits. We can talk about what we read into. But Atomic Habits, I don't know if you read it, might have heard about it. But it's basically a book about just how your smallest of habits and smallest of acts build into larger things over right. time. Right. It gives you kind of that perspective. Kind of like you were saying, LSD does, like point it toward you. Right. This book helps you really think about the larger perspective instead right. of just like this one moment. Well, I'll say this. It does help you focus on the moment, but it helps you see how the moment exist in the larger exactly. life, right? And this book says, um, like how you identify influences how you act. Right. And how you act influences how you identify. Right. And it's cyclical, right? So you saying that, um, hold on, what did you just say about identity? Uh, right before then. Just, like you just said you believe that you're something. Um, gangster. Oh, oh yeah. That. You said you knew that you were not a gangster. For sure. But you hung out with people like that. For sure. Because, because you knew you weren't that. Yeah. You might have done some stuff here and there, right. but that's not the core of who you are. And right. you come out of that, right? right? You didn't get caught up in them same cycles that the people you the, were around. The thing is, like, a lot of the times, like, let's just say a lot of these times people be caught up into this lifestyle, right? Because they get around these people and they don't understand that, hey, these are regular people like you. It's just, again, it's survival. Yeah. So what do you do? You get around these people and you feel like, shit, okay, how I need to act? Mm. Do I need to? But a lot of the times you don't be understanding me just being myself. That's what allowed me to kick it with the gangsters, mm. to kick it with the, the most roguish people in life because I was me. I was that person that was, hey, I don't think you should do that. Mm. So you call people out for certain things. Yeah, but that's why they gave me a pass mm. because I was, I was never trying to be that person that's like, right. hey, if you, you don't do it, right, you know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm being, a, some, they, these are regular people. But again, a lot of the times we see all these people, we like, I wonder do they cry? I wonder do they laugh? Hell yeah, they do all this shit. Mm. And sometimes you don't understand you being yourself will influence somebody to say, hey, just mm. because of you, well, I, I stopped doing all that shit. I found, I found my, I found Have my purpose. Had some people that Hell yeah. With that. That's fine. Cause I mean, I be trying to tell people, I got a lot of people who dead. I got a lot of people who are in prison. And I just be thinking like, damn, I'm thankful that I always knew who I was. Cause I could have been dead or I could have been in prison had I been persuaded. Mm. Because all it takes come is- come out of who you knew you were. All it takes is for, for one day for you to be like, for real? let me go get in the car with that person. Cause wow. I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna be able to relate to what they doing. And it just, man, so many situations, man. Yeah, I mean, cause it's like that's how that's Moments. man. I'm getting chills right now just thinking of how, cause you know what I'm saying. You got to be the 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 driver of your life. You got to drive. You got to grab the steering wheel at times when it's when it when it's, when you in the back seat sometimes and somebody else driving that car. Sometimes you got to be like, let me drive. Mm. Y'all about to crash. Mm. Let me let me become the driver of my life mm. because if I leave it up to y'all, y'all gonna crash. And we all gonna die. Mm. Sometimes you gotta be like, hey, y'all need to get out. I need to, 
I need to drive this car by myself. And, you know, like what LSD allowed me to do, it allowed me to separate. You know what I'm saying? It allowed me to say, okay, because I was never around brainiacs. Mm -hmm. I was always the person that's like, wow, wow. You felt like you were not the same as them. Mm -mm. I always knew I wasn't. I, I just knew it. You know what I'm saying? It's a feeling. I, I never looked down on them, mm -hmm. but I always knew. Like, I always knew what I wanted to do. I always knew what I wanted to be. They were still trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? So when I did um, LSD for the first time in my life, I had now I was attracting people that I wanted to meet and manifest to, to, to learn from. Because I was never learning from anybody. You know I was just learning bad habits. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't learning, you know what I'm saying? If I wanted to code, Trey in a trap wasn't teaching me how to code. <laughs> yeah. He was teaching me how to be a, a, a great criminal. And he was teaching me aspects of life of how to survive. Mm -hmm. But blah, blah, blah from Silicon Valley, they teaching me how to use my mind and how to elevate. So now you mix street smarts with, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You good. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, but like, uh, again, LSD is that thing that allows you to see the world for what it is. And before I did LSD, I didn't see the world as I see it now. Now I see the world as my playground. Mm. It's a big ass playground. And with that being a playground, I got the option to do whatever I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Nobody can't tell me nothing. The only person that can tell me something and for me to believe them is myself. Mm. If you tell me, hey, I'm a failure. If I listen to you, I will become a failure. But if I say... I'm not a failure and I'm jumping off the, the biggest, the, 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 the biggest slide while saying that, you can be like, damn, shit, that boy <laughs> believe in himself <laughs> and you going to go tell somebody else they're a failure, but you ain't going to tell me that. Right. That's why nobody, nobody don't have a boss to tell me I'm a failure because they, they, they don't believe them words. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, I don't rose from too many occasions to show you that I ain't a failure at anything. You know what I'm saying? You got that self-belief in yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Any situation that, that I ever fell from, I rose from it. I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? And hey, I'm, I'm going to just say, if you don't want to take LSD, bro did it for you. Yeah. All for them sure. life lessons yeah. and that, that wisdom. What I'm pulling out from what you said is that self-belief is essential yeah. for you to act and do the things that you need to to be successful. Before I forget, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you about the aliens. All right, so look. <laughs> Cause I'm a, this this story is gonna be real quick. Okay, okay, it's okay, gonna be okay. real quick. So after I did LSD for the first time, I remember my my son's mom was in the house, my best friend Pressure was in the house, and at the time I had this guy staying with me that just needed a place to crash. I didn't really know him, but just me being the type of person I am, I'm like, okay, you can stay at my house. And my kids was in the house. A couple, my my son and his mom had some kids that like like my kids. They still like my kids to this day, but. When I did LSD, I had been looking at this painting on the wall and the painting was this lady and the paint was dripping. Mm -hmm. So obviously when you do a, a new drug or whatever, you don't know when it's going to kick in. You don't know the side effects or nothing like that. So I, I, I was looking at this painting for just a whole hour. I ain't do nothing. I was just looking at the painting. I, but I didn't even know that I was becoming one of the trip. You know what I'm saying? Because I, mm -hmm. I was so comfortable. Just just imagine we in this room and I'm just staring at this, this, this poster right here. Mm -hmm. So I, I would go by and I just finally get up. Man, when I tell you I was walking in a pool of blood, just like everywhere, like I'm like walking. I'm like, yo, my friend, he not high. So I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, you you not tripping? It's blood everywhere. He like, you tripping. <laughs> so I'm like, but I needed to hear that I was tripping for uh -huh. me to like come back. Come down. Mm -hmm. But then I understood what that blood was for. Like everybody who was covered in blood, they was my family. Like for that trip, everybody that was covered in blood, they were they were extensions of me. The mm -hmm. only person that wasn't covered in blood was my homie. Well, he wasn't even, he wasn't really my homie. I, like again, I didn't even know this person. Mm -hmm. Just thinking back, that was really dangerous of me just to have somebody stay with me. Yeah. But that was the only person that wasn't covered in blood. And he looked so demonic mm -hmm. at this time. And I was like, okay, he gotta go. Because I had, I was debating of letting him go before then, but just me being a, having a good heart, just like he needs some more time. Wait, so make sure I understand this right. The person that looked demonic was the yeah. person that was staying with you for a little bit. Right. You're like, he has to go after you. That trip. trip. Cause I was like, why, why everybody that I know I love? Like I didn't have to question nothing. Like everybody that I knew I loved wholeheartedly covered in blood. Mm. This person was 
it's like a, a apple that's rotten. Mm -hmm. That's how they looked on that trip. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, that day he had asked me for some acid because I had, at this time, like, I'm a black kid with acid. That, that doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's so taboo. Like, we don't, we are taught to stay away from stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So when I had this acid, my friend, he was curious like me, but I was like, okay, if this made me think like this, imagine what it'll make you think like. So I was like, I had felt so good about that trip that I was like, if I continue to do LSD, I'm gonna get addicted. So what I did was I put it in a pill bottle and I put some rocks in it and I just threw it. I went out my house and I threw it, launched it. Cause I was like, I can't keep taking this. Cause that's how I, I felt. I had never felt that about life. So I was like, okay, I'm not about to be addicted to this. So I threw it away. So after that, my reality was different for like six months. Like, you know, imagine just seeing life for what it is as regular and then something happens, changes everything that you know about life, makes you question everything. Of course you like, shit, damn, that's the truth? Yeah. Oh, shit. So a couple of days passed by, I was on my computer and um, i never forget, I was on a computer at my office and I was editing a video at the time because I'm gonna tell you some crazy shit about some video shit, but the screen was black. It's like this TV screen. It's black. Dog, I seen an alien. I swear to God. On everything I love. An alien came to the screen. And the message was, hey, it's aliens that exist on Earth. But we are not here to hurt y'all. We're here to make this shit better. Because it's, it's, so, it's so many different types of aliens. It's, it's, it's a conglomerate of aliens. Like, you got aliens that look just like us. Where you get your information? Man, this is what I know. Man, because look, I'm going to tell you some shit. Like, so when I started, obviously after LSD, I started eating right. I became vegan. Like, because my thing was my penile gland. If any, if any of y'all know what a penile gland, that's basically your third eye. That's basically like what's, what we use to basically maneuver through all of this shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what allowed me to see the vision. That's what allowed me to say, okay, if I, if I, see, if I can see something in my mind, I already know it already happened. The mm -hmm. problem is when I don't see something, I don't, I don't get involved. Because it's like, it's like so corny. It's like some Desert Raven shit. You know what I'm saying? You, That's something we, we all understand. You, 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 you see it. Yeah. Even though you may not see it, I see it. It's not, I'm not about to get data in my mind if, it, if it's just bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that was one time. The second time, I was at my art studio and. And it, how, how far apart were these encounters? Like, like this was like a year. So a year between the first and second one. So around this time, like this, this is a true story. This, this is how I'm gonna show you how powerful we are. Around this time, I'm eating good. Like I'm eating so clean. Like obviously no meat, just no bullshit at all. I'm eating clean as clean. I'm damn near living like a monk. But at this time, I'm understanding that my mind is 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 operating like a computer. Like my data, my 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 search engine is is at an all time high. But this is from me meditating every day, mm -hmm. me, because at the time I didn't have a job, so I was able to think every day. Mm -hmm. That's how I understand the importance of being able to have a little bit of money to where you can have time to really focus right. on self, because yeah. it allows you to get your mind right. Mm -hmm. And once you get your mind right, anything in life is, is accomplishable. I've heard about, bro, what is it? Let's pause the alien story again. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Like self-care, because we know like we're supposed to eat right. We don't really know what that means. It's like, okay, I won't go to McDonald's. I'll go to, I don't know, somewhere healthier. And then I need to work out. And I'm going to work out, but I don't know really what workouts to do. And I know I probably should, like, meditate or journal or do something that's good to, like, just sit with my thoughts and all that. So, like, what did that look like for you? And what would you recommend to people that are trying to, like, do better with their wellness and stuff? Well, first and foremost, I would, um, <clears throat> I would recommend everybody to do research on whatever it is that you're trying to uh dive deep into if it resonate with your spirit get into it you know what i'm saying i stopped eating meat and all that type of stuff because again i was curious about evolving as a person because you know i'm the type of person i gotta always evolve or else life is just gonna be boring to me mm -hmm. yeah you know like we were talking about earlier that makes a lot of sense right so me i'm the type of person i was just like okay I'm eating bullshit. Cause I was once that type of person that's just like, you couldn't tell me that McDonald's was bad. Like, <laughs> you know, I hear you. How did you go from that to not eating meat? Just 
And was it a long process or was it like nah see me real, like I'll I said all of it out. me I always had a goal because like I said once once I study something and I, I see some validity into it I'm on it because now I understand that I have the opportunity to take my life from here to here and to me that's what life's about it's about it's it's about leveling up so if this is what I need to do to level up I'm gonna do that you know what I'm saying so I figured out you know the whole thing because at first I stopped eating dairy. Because dairy, it was it was from my research and everything like that. It was clogging your pineal gland. It was you know that's why you have mucus and all of that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Since I stopped eating meat and all that type of stuff, I ain't never had mucus. Like I ain't never been sick. Nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Only like I I, I probably get sick like once a month. I mean not once a month, but like once a year. You know what I'm saying? But when I ate all this shit like dairy meat, I used to be I ain't gonna say I was sick every day, but I had a common cold. Mm -hmm more than usual right. but again that's me studying now I understand why i was having that that's bacteria that's just a lot of stuff obviously people choose what they want to believe and i never push my thoughts on anybody but just try all i'm saying is try it out mm. try it out and i promise you'll come out a better person mm. you know what i'm saying but self-care is everything because again you you can be the most successful man female alive but if you're not taking care of yourself what's the point of money that's just gonna dwindle. I had no time to enjoy it. Cause money, cause sometimes, Crazy. sometimes money can't even buy you health. Right. You got people who got cancer, all these yeah. type of things that you know. I'm talking about riches are the riches. They look at Steve Jobs. Yeah. They couldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why. But if you start, start at a a, a pace to where you understand because your body is like a car to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? More people care about their car than their body. Like, if you got a car, you got a f Ferrari or a Toyota, what kind of gas you put in your car? Mm -hmm. You know enough to where if somebody try to put some gas, you, hey, hey, 93, 93. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But how come you don't treat your your, your, your body like that? Mm. Hey, hey, no, 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 no. 93. 93. So yeah. I'm saying, what is 93 to you? Mm. So figure out your 93 and then get to it. I figured out my 93 and like I said, it may not work for everybody else, but my 93 is just no meat, no dairy. And it's caused me to really see the future and have clarity, mm. but that's just my journey. Right. But my journey, everybody journey. And that's the point of this podcast is just to share yours. People can take the meat, spit out the bones and then go about their business. I want to talk about a couple more things before we wrap up. You talked about authenticity, right. being around some of these gangsters and stuff like that. You knew that wasn't you. How does authenticity help with your personal brand? Like bringing it back to what we started the podcast off, you trying to brand Brill right. as a human being so that people can come along your journey and just support you in that way. So you can have the means to help other people through what you do. So how does authenticity help with that? Is it important? Is it not? For sure. Uh, being authentic allows your brand to not be perfect. And when you when you don't have a perfect brand, it allows you to have a life experience. You know what I mean? It, it allows people to say, I identify with that. I resonate with that. Mm. But when you live this perfect brand cliche thing, it's you only going to get one type of audience. You're going to get this facade mm. and a facade can only last for so long. But I never forget how I started like. Obviously, I've rebranded so much, obviously, but it's like a couple years, like maybe like a year or two before I started Wonderland. I remember I started documenting my my like my real life. Like, obviously, on social media, you let people see what, you know, obviously you probably do something good. You probably paint something good. You probably do a good song. You post it. But I got to a point. It's just like, hey, I'm experiencing life. I'm at the bottom. But I was posting things because I knew that I wasn't going to be at the bottom for long. Mm -hmm. But it's like, okay, I'm going to show people what it looks like to be at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they can say, okay, so they can have a timeline right. from start to finish. And right now, we're not even in the middle of our stories right now. We just had a, we got a great starting point. And that's like, what's a movie without adversity? Like, what's a movie without that, that storyline? Who wants to see that's this movie that's just like... From start to finish, everything, everything was right. great. <laughs> Superhero didn't have to save nobody. There was Superhero, no struggle. Like, it was great. He just was wearing a cape. <laughs> but what? How long does that movie last until somebody says, damn, what's the premise? Mm -hmm. 
How long? It's, the movie ain't over yet. <laughs> it's just gonna be good, 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 good. Damn. Yeah. But I never forget. So my house had burned down, just free accident. And that was the first time like I have ever lost everything in life. I lost everything to my name. Everything. And that was the first time. Like, of course, we lose things in life. But <clears throat> this was the time life was dark. Like, I ain't. You know, I remember I always talk about how I seen my dreams. It was the first time in my life I ain't seen none of that. Mm. Like just imagine somebody coming in your room and psh, you can't see nothing. Like life's so dark, you like this. Like all all you focus on is trying to find a light. Like mm -hmm. right. you're not focused on your goals. You're not focused on success. So for that period of time, because at the time I had um, my mom, she got a whole bunch of restaurants in Atlanta. A whole bunch of brunch spots. So at the time, I was living in Florida, but obviously my mom had opened up some restaurants, so she needed help. So I wasn't going to come, but my sister worked for my mom. So she was like, yo, come. And just out of respect that I got for my sister, I was like, yo, I'm going to go for my sister because my sister is my best friend. She one year apart, but that's the person that really raised me. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go help. I'm going to go help my mom just based off the strength of my sister. So I got to this restaurant. Mind you, I put my dreams on hold. I had an art studio. So I was like, okay, let me go be the bigger person. Cause I had been beefing with my mom like my whole life, just based off of like, just feeling like she wasn't a parent. So just walking around with this. Like resentment. Right. So I was talking to God one day and God was just like, you got to clean your soul. Mm. Like if there's an opportunity to get things right with your mother, that opportunity was presented. But when I had the opportunity to go work with my mom, but mind you, I ain't, so it's like, okay, clean slate. Let me go, let me go figure this out. So start working at this restaurant. I was a busser. Mind you, like this is my mom's restaurant. Like this is her restaurant. I'm the busser. Like just getting treated. So I'm, but I'm understanding different positions, how people treat you. Just not the people that you work with, just consumers. I'm talking about, I'm taking trash off tables and just seeing how people interact with me, just throwing me shit, like just, mm. just this like feeling bad for you type shit based on your position in life. So I'm like, okay, boom, work my way up. Now I'm a server. So I'm getting, I'm getting some money now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mom, <laughs> she, money nice. mom, mom making the money, but at this time, like mom not giving me any company money. So I'm a server. But now I'm, I'm extra nice with the, the buses now because I come from the buser. Uh, so I'm, yeah. but I'm looking at how people treat. So now I'm like, okay, I'm gonna look out for the buser. Cause I remember boy, mm. two months ago, I was the buser. Right. And I seen how niggas was treating me, boy. Yeah. So now I'm a server. So I'm getting my money up. You feel me? I'm elevating. Now I elevate. I'm a GM now, a general manager. I'm taking over shit. So now I went from not making, being able to make any changes in the company to where now I'm, I'm handling all the finances. Mm. I'm, Hand, I'm, I'm basically the whole inspiration of this restaurant. And how long was that period from being busboy to finance manager and all that stuff? This was like a year. You did all that in one year? Yeah, I moved up. Anything wow. I do in life, I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to move up. So what did that look like? Like going from busboy to server, from server to whatever, whatever, to finance manager? Like, what is it like? Mom's like, I'm ready. Mom's, no, I'm ready. Yeah, or like, did you just have to prove yourself those, through no. each? So, I, so the, the biggest thing was me proving myself to be a server because being a server, you got to have confidence as a buster. You don't have to talk to nobody. You don't, you all you, your job is to clean up as a server. You got to sell a product. You got it. Cause that obviously your, that's what your tips depend on. How, how marketable I, because the thing is like to anybody that's serving out there, you want to make these people a fan of you. Mm. Fuck the restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Like when they when they go home, are they thinking about the restaurant or are they thinking about you? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I became a server, I understood the gift of the gap. I understood how to talk to people. I understood how to not not that it's a facade, but I understood how to make people my friend. Right. I understood to, to how to make somebody say, "Hey, when we come in, we asking for you." Mm -hmm. Yeah. I understood that because the thing is, it's just like if you got five people coming in, but three people asking for you. That's your money. Mm -hmm. So becoming a server and I was 
when I was becoming a server, I was making so much money that I was able to invest in things like, you know what I'm saying? My studio, camera equipment, all of this stuff that I had all my dreams that I wanted to do because I always wanted to pivot. I never wanted to work in the restaurant industry, but I was like, okay, while this opportunity is here, I'm going to make the best out of it. So when I was a server, I was just running it up. But then my mom was trying to pivot and open up restaurant number two. So she was like, hey, I need you to step into another role. I ain't really want to be the GM because I was like, I'm thinking of money. I'm like, I understand salary. Mm -hmm. Salary is, is mm -hmm. a cap. It's right. like, I know even if I work harder, my salary is this. Right. But as a server, it's no cap. I can make a thousand dollars a day and probably make 2000 tomorrow. That was, yeah. was pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. So money was money. Yep. So when I became a GM, I understood that role, but at the same time, I couldn't be the preacher in that church. Because me the type of person, any company that you appoint me a part of, I'm going to tell them to focus on their dreams. And I'm going to tell them that, hey, I don't want to see you here in a year. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not the right person to, to have for your company if, right. if you expect people to be there for a long time. Sorry. Because I know I know what I'm going to do. I know what type of person I am when I go to a job. I'm not thinking long term in this company. I'm thinking of, okay, how can this company work for me exactly. so I can elevate? Exactly. So that was my whole spiel with everybody that I came in contact at this job. Like, hey, y'all making a lot of money. What y'all believe in? Like dreams. Mm. Hey, take this, bloom, bloom. So to my mom, it was just like, why are you saying shit like that? <laughs> Another motherfucker just quit because you talking about some you you bigger than believe the world. Believe in yourself. Yeah, now the motherfucker quit. So not <laughs> you feel me? So, funny, so, so fast forward. Um, I was a GM for the company. And then, so my house burned down. I had always been telling my mom I wanted to pivot. So the house burned down, then that was a great opportunity for me to pivot because at the time, I never forget, the day that my house burned down, my mom had called me to come to work that same day and was just like, close the restaurant down. Like to, and when everybody finished eating, close it down. But I was just like, man, I just seen my whole house burn down. Like, I'm not even thinking about no restaurant. So at that particular time, I knew that I was done with the restaurant, mm -hmm. just based on how she made me feel. And again, this trauma is coming back from my childhood when my mom wasn't there for me. This was another defining moment in my life that she wasn't there as my mom. Mm -hmm. she, was, she was more so there as a business partner. Right. Like, what's, right. what's right for the business? But I needed her to step out of business mode and to come check on your son. Mm -hmm. His house, he just lost everything. Right. We got enough people at this restaurant, they can shut this shit down, they own. So at that moment, I had been like trying to find this map of like, okay, I'm about to quit. So mm. probably like a week later, some shit happened at the restaurant. I knew I was going to quit that day. So a lot of people don't understand when I quit, I walked away from millions of dollars. Like if I was talking to you right now and I would stay at that restaurant, I'd be up. But at the same time, I wouldn't be up in things that I wanted to do. Right. Because, you know, the food business, that's a million dollar industry. Do it right. Yeah. But the reason why I wanted to pivot, because even though, you know what I'm saying, I was the GM of my mom's restaurant, I was still getting paid like regular people. So in my mind, I was like, well, I got a better chance at gambling for myself and making more money and just believing in what I want to do. Because I know what I, what I want to do. I know it's going to pop. But you know what I'm saying? So I took that as a lesson. Those two years or those three years that I spent focusing on somebody else's dream, I was like, what if I... Mm. Focus three years on oh, my man. dream and went, hard on working and, with somebody. You else. know what I'm saying? Cause I I went hard every yeah. day, dog. Like even when I went home, I it it's no uh, you, as a family business, you don't clock out. I went hard for three years and I lost time. I lost every I lost my passion. So I was like, okay, when the house burned down, I remember I told my mom, I was like, yo, I'm about to move to California. She was like, yeah, that ain't gonna work. Like she told me straight up. She was like, that ain't gonna work. She was like, you better off just staying at the restaurant because she was so I, 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 I played a pivotal role at the restaurant so much that she knew my importance at the restaurant. But I wanted her to see my importance to the world. Like, fuck the restaurant. Like, this is who I really am. My legacy is not being a GM at a restaurant, even though I do a damn good job at it. That's not me. That's a if, if we talking about a percentage of somebody's self, this is me at this restaurant. Imagine this. Yeah. So. I told my mom I was moving to California, and she was just like, nah, that ain't gonna work. Boom. I left like a week later. And 
California, it, the only reason why California didn't work because COVID. COVID. Oh, so you moved out there recently. Right. So like right before like, COVID. Yeah, so. I'm a, cause I, basically I'm a, I, this story is about to come into full circle of how I met you. So yeah. co COVID happened in California, like it was still happening. You know, Atlanta COVID only really lasted for like two weeks, like where it was shut down. And we was back popping. <laughs> back outside. Just with a little mask on, you feel me? Yeah. But in yeah. California, it was the total opposite. Mm -hmm. Like shit was still shut down. And not only that, everybody who had money, like the people who was cutting checks, they moved. Mm -hmm. They moved to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Even the people from New York, everybody was moving to Atlanta. But little did I know, it's just like if the people in California are trying to get to Atlanta, the people in Atlanta are trying to get to New York. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just based on you being somewhere so long. It's just like, I want to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But when I went to California, I had an epiphany. Like, life hit me. Like, it was just like, okay, stop running. Mm -hmm. Stop running and make it. You know what I'm saying? So California was just too fake for me. It was just like everything was perfect. Everything was like... I was like, this is not what I need right, right now. Like, I, I, oh, I, 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 like, I like to travel here, mm -hmm. but exactly. for a couple of days, yes. but me living here, mm -mm. so when I came back to Atlanta, the first time I really appreciated Atlanta for what it looked like, mm -hmm. I was like, damn, the trees are everywhere, right. normal people. That's the first thing I say when I touched down, when I visited Georgia Tech, I was like, the trees are so green. There were right. so many of them. That's right. so funny. So, but at the time, I'm, again, I'm homeless. You know what I'm saying? Because when my house burned down, my mom didn't give us no money. But again, this is, I did all the finances. So I understand we making millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Millions. So that shit hurt me to my core because I was like, okay, if family not here for me right now, when I really need them, this is it. This is all I needed for family to show me that. Not in this lifetime, maybe in the next one. So but I ain't, I ain't dwell on it. I just said, okay, I gotta, I, now for the first time in my life, I gotta be the savior of my life. So even though it took so long, it took me, cause at, around that time I was like 30, it took me 30 years to become a savior of my life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But it took for me to lose everything, mm. everything, not just something, not just an item, everything at the bottom. So now I was homeless or whatever and um, Around this time, I was going to different Airbnbs, you feel me? But all the Airbnbs that I was going to, they was born. Like, they was just like, door. White walls. Like, I'm talking about. Same furniture. So I was like, at, at, around this time, I ain't have no money in my account. And I was just like, okay, I'm an artist. Like, okay, I keep complaining about these Airbnbs. If I was to create an Airbnb, what would it look like? So my mind just started racing. I was manifesting something, you know what I'm saying? Like. I was trying to get these, I was trying to move into places or whatever, I just kept getting denied. Every place that I went to, denied, 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 everything, capital, like, denied, mm -hmm. everything. So one day my next door neighbor told me to come over here, like just out of the blue. And I don't know why, I just came over here one day. So at the time, his girlfriend worked in the leasing office. So it was the first thing I did when I came to his spot, I was like, how you got in here? <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm homeless. I'm like, I'm like, how you got in here? You asked him the right question. So he said, it was like my girl, as soon as he said my girl, that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, yeah. that's all I needed. <laughs> but I, I had been thinking like five years ago, I was driving in this area and I was like, I want to live over there. I was like, I want to live in this, not like, not this complex, but it was just this area. Oh, it's a beautiful area. Yeah, so every time I, I come over, right. I'm like, yeah, I ain't noticed. I ain't noticed at the five years ago. I ain't know the name of this area. I just knew I drove past it one time, and I was like, "It's like a kid looking out the window, saying, mm -hmm. damn." And I wanna, Buckhead yeah, at the houses, right? I was like, I want to live over there. And fast forward, when I got this spot, I started driving around. I was like, "This is the place that I said I wanted to live five years ago." Mm. Like it dawned on me, this is the place. So, so at the time, again, I'm homeless. Just out of the grace of God, this lady. God fearing lady, like this lady who prayed every day. She was close to my sister. She seen me one day and she was like, you can stay, she, you can stay on my couch. Mm. So I was like, that's, I, I needed that. Like I needed that. Cause I have that this time I have no money. Like when I talk about no money, zero, zero dollars to my name. I had this, I did a temp job for one day and I was in there and that last day I was like, cool. Okay. I think they gave me like 150. The second day they called me back. I was in this warehouse. I was doing some robotic shit like this. And I looked around, everybody was doing just like this. And again, my, myself started talking to me. My higher self was like, look around. 
I was like this. And I went from doing this to like this. Myself said, hey, if you don't figure this life shit out, this is what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. Mm. Like my higher self, like was really telling me like, yeah, this is what you can be doing. Like, like more so looking down on me, like if you keep doing this stupid shit and the stupid mm. shit is going for these little mediocre jobs when you got a mind. You a genius, dog. You you like my. I talk to myself every day. Just how I'm talking to you, my my higher self. Like you a you you genius. Your name Brill. You brilliant. Mm. You gon you gonna go out like this? I never forget. Stop with the machine. I was walking out the door. The manager. He was like, "What you doing?" I was like, "I'm out of here." That day, I said, "I need to figure something out." So again, me coming from the restaurant industry, I was like, "Okay, what's a way that I can make some money?" That I, can, that I can save some money and get on my feet. I was like, I need to become a server. So got this job at 10 Lizzie's, start running it up. Cause again, this lady let me stay on her couch so I ain't have to pay rent. You know, obviously I, I gave her money, but like I didn't have like $2,000 in rent. All I had to do was groceries, blah, blah, blah. Even that I didn't have to do it cause she was just that dope. Like she was just sent from, I think she an angel to me. If, if, I, if I make a movie, it's an angel that was sent from God. So. I became a server at 10 Lizzie's and I just started making some, I started saving money. Like it's the first time I'm starting saving money because I had a goal. My goal was to get an Airbnb and flip it. Like that was my goal. So now I was like, okay, I need to make some money. I need to save it. So boom, fast forward, come over here and I create this little offer letter to get in here. Cause I like, okay, if I get the spot, I know I can never lose the spot. So. And you own. Hmm. Are you renting or no, own? No, I, I rent the spot. Gotcha. So I, I got in here and. The vision just started like I went from just like I was like, OK, well, if I create an Airbnb, how do I want to do it? Like, what do I want people to feel when they come in here? And it's like the same feelings that I wanted when I was an Airbnb guest. I was like, I want people to feel inspired, like even if they not an artist, like fuck, fuck art, blah, blah, blah. I want them to walk out a better person. Like mm. if they a garbage man, I want them to walk out and say I'm about to be the best garbage man there is in life. Wow. So when I made the. um so at first when I started doing everything, I was just like just minimum designing, you know what I'm saying? Because I wanted to just be color palettes and things like that. So I met Spiff just off some God shit. Like, I don't know. He just popped up on my timeline. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know because I, I, I wasn't following him like that. He just popped up on my timeline. And I was just like, yo, I want a mural at this time. I, I wasn't really the only art that I really did in here was in my room. I did some art in my room. So I'm an artist, but like. My intent was to never, I just wanted to do a whole bunch of collaborations with people. But fast forward, Spiff come and do the mural. And I learned so much from that situation. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't know at that time, that was Spiff first time doing a mural. You know what I'm saying? His his first mural was was this right here. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm not that. Mm, me neither. But I, at the time, I think God put us together because this was like an opportunity for him to to say, okay, I can do something bigger than just a canvas or some right. digital art. Yeah. So I paid him or whatever, and I, I paid I paid a lot of money for that mural. But again, me thinking long term, because anytime I do business with somebody, I think long term. I don't think- I was just talking to the vlog about this, bro. Yes, I talk I about think it. Long term, if, if I'm gonna spend money with you, I'm gonna figure out how can we make more opportunities for a year from now, we both up together. We, we, yes. we up exactly. But that's based off relationships. How, yes, how you how you treat yes. so like because obviously that first transaction is money because you don't yes, know me. All I don't know you. But after that, if we got a great relationship, dog, you in every room I am. I, I promise. You know what I'm saying? So what happened with Spiff, even though, you know, I, I love Spiff because this is a this is a this is a learning era. This is this is what happens in life. So I never forget. I was like, he was such a dope artist that I was like, okay, the next thing I want him to do, I want him to design. I had did the hallway, but I didn't know art was in the hallway. I just put the red up. I was like, I want him to do the bathroom and I want him to do, I want him to do those pieces right there. But I didn't know it at the time, but Spiff was in survival mode. Mm. So Spiff gave me some crazy prices, but I'm a creator. So I understand prices. I understand regular prices and I understand, hey, 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 hey. You trying to hit me over the head, and it tarnished it tarnished our relationship. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It put it because I understood what he was going through, but at the same time, you don't have to be like that with me because I'm the person that's anytime somebody come in here, I'm a I'm gonna say, 
such and such did this, mm -hmm. such and such did this, such and such did this. So now your work went from just me to everybody that I come in contact with, they hitting you and I'm gonna make sure they hit you. So, but I'm gonna tell you the good thing that came out of that. After that situation, the artist in me was just like, yo, you gotta, like, why aren't you doing Mm, so that's where everything else started to come from. Yeah, that's so because again, I have no art in here. It was just just this because at the time, yeah, at the time when you came in here, none of none of my art was in here for you to look at me as an artist. None of this was here yeah. at all. It was just a mural, right? That right. was being made, right? But but at the time, I had you know, I was I was praising artists so much that I forgot to praise myself as an artist. Mm. I forgot to say, hey, I'm I can I can design some shit. You know what I'm saying? So when I start those pictures on the wall, those were my first like to myself, like, okay, you can do this. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it was a money thing at first. It's like if somebody, if somebody like, let's just say you know how to build a house and somebody say for me to build your house, it's going to cost three million dollars. And you know, the late, you know, the charge of wood, you know, you know, all that. So you like, damn, I guess I'm going to build this house myself. And in the process of you building the house, you like, damn, I know how to build a house. Mm. And then people start walking around and say, damn, you built a house? I can build another house. Mm. So when I started making art, I started believing in myself as an artist. You know what I'm saying? Because before that, I just wanted to make a great Airbnb. But now it's just like, okay, well, I can be a great artist. So got this place done and I let people see the progress. I let people yeah. see from I let people see from my house fire to like they seen all of that. They seen when I was homeless. They seen when I had got the lease here. I was building that that anticipation of like, boy, we ruined for you. Cause mm -hmm. we 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 didn't think you was gonna come out of that shit. And it's even me now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right now, in my head, I believe in myself so much. That's why I show something every day. Because even though I feel like we successful right now, but once we get to that point to where financially, I'm telling you, people gonna have a blueprint. They're gonna say, okay. This person started two years ago from this and look look at what we have in common. Nehemiah was consistent, Brill was consistent. So what's the blueprint? The blueprint is staying consistent. You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen people with zero talent make it in the industry because they was just consistent. So imagine you got talent and you consistent. You gonna it's a force to reckon with, like fuck, like you know what I'm saying? So right now, where we at right now, fast forward to, to now. We here, you know what I'm saying? So now the focus is right now, it's just obviously becoming one of the biggest artists that we talked about earlier, like creative wise, painting wise, but obviously creating a brand and pivoting, like having a brand so big that you can have multiple things under that brand, but that comes with that brand. If you don't have a, like for example, Nipsey Hussle is, is you know, one of the greats, but what would the marathon slogan be without Nipsey? What if somebody just said the marathon? Okay. But it took for Nipsey to say, okay, the marathon. That's under his brand. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you have to a- To exemplify that through his life. Too. Right, exactly. So, cause that's what people are. People are a fan of your life. People are a fan of your life. Sometimes they're not a fan of a product. For example, Beyonce has this thing called the beehives, right? Mm -hmm. To where she can drop anything and that beehive is going to get it. I don't give a damn if it's whack or not. The f it's, she gets uh, her toenail clippings. Right, because the thing is, Somebody buying it. what people don't understand, I, it took me a long time to understand this too, because I was the type of person who's like, okay, I don't want to sell this and put it to this price, blah, blah. But people want to support you. It's people that know in their heart, even though I don't influence this, it's people who know that they ain't gonna never do nothing in their life. But they live in their dreams through you. Yeah, vicarious. Like I'm talking whatever about that word is. you you make it, they made it. Yeah. They going you drop yeah. a t-shirt that's cost a hundred, they gonna pay that a hundred because they understand they fueling your dreams and they understand you made it, we all made it. And that's what you gotta realize when you when you on this journey, it's not just you. Take yourself out of the equation. Who you doing it for? Who are all these people that's believing in you? Like when you sit down at the end of the night and you and you visualize, who are all the people that you know in your corner? Those are the people that you're doing it for. I'm telling you, these people believe in right now. Somebody in the room that's talking about you right now. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that's saying, oh, I want to give it Nehemiah. You're not in that room, but that's that's off your brand alone. Somebody trusting your brands alone to promote that brand for you. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. Once we become so big, we don't have to promote a damn thing. Our 
family, our fan base, our friends, they are walking billboards every day. So that's where we at. And that's why I'm grateful at this moment, even us doing this interview. You feel me? Because I feel like I don't feel like we are bigger than the other. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. to me, I feel like we 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 in a race. Right. And we both at the same we at the same place in this race. We trying to get to the finish line. We not here. We not here. Both of us like right here. We got we got a long way to go. But at the same time, we started. I started. I'm. I know I'm started. My shoes on. I'm running. I'm not. I'm not tired. I'm in the race. Like I know I'm in the race. So now it's just like, what does that finish line look like? But just, like but just me. I'm not even worried about yeah, that. Yeah. But just me understanding running. that I'm laced up and I'm running. I'm yeah. good. Cause I know two years ago I wasn't laced up. I wasn't running. I was on the bench. Mm. I was trying to get in the game. While other people was running, they didn't give me the baton. You feel me? So I'm I'm here. We here. Like for real, for real. Yeah. If you had a megaphone, like Billy Graham, you know who that is? Mm. The preacher from like back in the whatever? Mm -mm. There's this like preacher from back then. Crazy man just had like like a sea of people, bro, right. like to preach to. If you had that and the whole world was watching, what would you say to them? I would tell them one simple thing, and that's to follow your dreams, not people. You know what I mean? Just go after whatever you believe in. You know what I mean? Listen to yourself. You have the final say so at the end of the day. You know what I mean? You got to be your biggest fan. You got to be your biggest critic. You got to be your biggest advisor. Obviously, you have friends and things around you, but at the end of the day, you got to sign off on all of the decisions when it comes to your life. It's only going to be one person that, that goes in that casket. Well, it's yourself. I ain't, I ain't never seen a casket that fit two people or a group of friends. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, make this life count because it's a small life. Once we sit back and we think about it, it's, life is only it's a glimpse. So make every single day count. Every day. That's great advice. All right, bro. That's it. Episode number three. Man. Jam packed episode. That was that was that was the one. Nah, for real, for real. My goal with everyone is to be better than the last, yeah. and better is subjective. But I just want to make sure that you know whoever is sitting on the couch with me feels comfortable and express them full selves. And it seems like you're able to do that. So oh, for sure. Thank yeah. you for being here, for bro. For sure, man. If y'all want to tap more into what Brill does, I feel like we just scratched the surface. Right. We talked about a lot of life stuff, but if y'all want to tap into all the stuff he has going on. Y'all can't see it. I might put some B-roll clips in there just to show y'all the space. But he's a multifaceted creative painter, sculptor, uh, carpenter. Like, there's stuff around here that I need y'all to see. Like, he actually builds stuff, paints it. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. I just have to show y'all. Space curator, fashion designer, a lot of stuff. And I don't. I know there's a lot of people in Atlanta who be like, yeah, I'll do everything. No, he really does everything at a high level and is passionate. So make sure y'all follow him. I'm going to put his Instagram on the screen again right here. Make sure y'all follow him. And that's it, man. All right, before y'all go, I know I said we was done with the episode, but my whole goal with this is to bring a wholeness to you who's watching. And if you know someone who would get something out of this podcast, would learn something, feel more edified as a person, have more direction in life, share this with them. Just click the little share button down beneath, copy the link, send it to a friend. It takes two minutes. You don't know whose lives you could change through sending this. My goal is just that, is to change lives. So if you want to help me do that through people in your community, just share this with one person. Um, yeah, we'll see y'all in episode number four. I appreciate you specifically for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Woke up this morning, I'm feeling blessed. Stepped out the bed, man, I cannot stress. To the class, I got my Sunday best. It's not Sunday, I just like the dress. I think I'm hot, man, I must confess. So I don't care if you are not impressed. Self-driven swagger, so time to mess. Stop all that hating, you look a mess.